start off, you will have players. So you'll have them today. They're just in the midst of, of stretching right now and going through recovery. So I want to respect your time. So I'll start the day off. I thought a very, very productive day. Again, some challenging elements we need to practice in the heat. Again, it's been a, a grind, especially when we're finishing up uh, summer school, which, you know, it's really been very challenging to really get in a true training camp mode. And uh, especially when you have a young football team, their minds are everywhere. Uh, you know, we have to get much more physical as a football team. Our young players, our freshmen, have to learn how to fight through the fatigue. Our work capacity as a football team needs to improve overall. But I started to see some leadership today from some of our older players. Uh, expectations uh, continuing to grow. You know, a great illustration, we're keeping score. We break at halftime under the tent and it's 85 to 66. Uh, defense is losing and defense comes back and they wins the over they win the overall day 116 to 112. A great illustration of keep playing on every single play, but also a great illustration to our offense that four plays made the difference between winning and losing. Really five plays made the difference between winning and losing today. And every play counts. You can never take a playoff. Uh, we have great video to be able to go back now and evaluate. And some individuals are starting to distance themselves. Uh, some individuals are kind of taking themselves out of the picture to play. And uh, everything is kind of uh, coming to play right now. And like we told our team, everyone's responsible for their own personal identity, what they put on video. And uh, we're proving right now to see which individuals can play on a consistent basis and what individuals uh, that can help Tennessee win on game day. So I'll answer any questions you may have. I can't hear you. Well, you know, the heat, we're going to have to play in heat. You know, we're, we're from the South, we play in the SEC. So it's a, it's a mindset, but it's that mental effort, it's that mental intensity, it's that energy that it takes that we talk about of having game-like conditions, game intensity to prepare for practice like it's a game. So it starts in your morning, it starts in your approach, it starts with your hydration, it starts with what you eat. We had a couple individuals that struggled with the heat because they didn't get enough fuel, they didn't get enough to eat, and they didn't hydrate all day and they were young players, and you learn. And so these are great teaching opportunities, but we can't afford to have all these teaching opportunities all the time. They need to mature, and they need to mature in a hurry. So those just were really not major? No, not major. Well, I thought A.J., uh, you know, we held him out of some, some of the live contact stuff today uh, just to hold him out, but also to bring leadership. And A.J. was an individual. I thought he took monumental steps forward in, uh, in leadership and ownership of this football team on defense where he called the defense together in the tent and kind of rallied them and got them going, and we're going to need that because we're not out on the field with these individuals come game day. You know, it has to be a player-led football team like I continually say each and every day. So I thought AJ took some steps that way, but just you know the overall style of play is is not game ready in any way. We don't have enough ball disruptions. You know we're not finishing at the football right now. We're not getting 11 hats to the ball on defense. Our style of play has to improve. Same thing on offense. Way too many negative yardage football plays. Negative yardage plays are the difference between winning and losing. Too many false start penalties again, and that's that that mental toughness that it takes. You know, with the noise going and listening to the quarterback's cadence and the change in plays and, and just being disciplined. So, again, we need to continue to focus on that because, as you know, the basis of our program is based off of discipline, and we're an undisciplined football team right now overall. The actions of one reflect on all. It's the power of the position. If one person lets that position down, uh, they let everyone down. <clears throat> Not where we need to be. And uh, every individual has to take accountability for their performance. And uh, we're not playing winning football at that position right now. I'm always going to be brutally honest with you. And uh, those three individuals need to step up. It's just an overall consistency and performance. And uh, it's not completion percentage because just when you say, well, there's 60%, what about drops? 
you know, efficiency is what we're hunting. And we're not efficient right now at that position. And uh, we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to refine it. But our passing game needs to take monumental strides the next couple of days and moving forward. You know, Aaron has been, uh, take one practice out of the mix. He's been pretty consistent all uh, camp so far. George Bullock has done uh, some good things along with Derek Brodus. But today was great to see. We did some game-ending kicks at the end, uh, sorted different field positions, assorted hash marks, uh, even from the left hash and the right hash at the one-inch yard line because the angle is so much different. And Aaron Melly was five for five with pressure, and that's why we concluded practice because he was five for five. We'll continue to manufacture stressful situations for these individuals. But as you know, uh, field position and kicking game are critical elements to winning football games. But uh, I've been pleased so far with the performance of those individuals. Uh, so I've been happy with that so far. But you mentioned some guys are separating themselves. Who are some of those guys? Well, I don't want to call anyone out right now. You know, uh, some veterans, uh, Kurt Majit continues to bring it each and every day. Uh, you know, another individual who's really upped everyone's level of play has been Derek Barnett. Uh, Derek Barnett has had a tremendous camp, his effort. He made one of the best plays I've seen in a long time, two days ago in practice, where he tra he, he uh, caught Chase Devon Young down the sideline about 30 yards running to the football. And it's been great to see. And so uh, Derek Barnett has elevated the defensive line play. Uh, you know, he's one of the individuals that stick out. Elliot Berry, we continue to uh, to challenge him. We, we're asking a lot of him in terms of playing nickel, playing some will linebacker, moving him around. Uh, you know, but it's it's just overall consistency as a football team that we need uh, each and every day. Too inconsistent right now. Well, first of all, uh, I think this class has great maturity. Uh, our sports information department does a great job of really uh, teaching them how to sell their personal brand, and uh, they, you know, and uh, they're going to play, and they're going to be in in some mini battles. They have to go on the road and play in the SEC, go on the road and play against Oklahoma, you know, and play in what I think is the best fan base in the country, and uh, so why not? Let them talk to the media because, you know, they're going to have to play in front of hundreds of thousands of people all the time. So, uh, part of a maturity factor as well. Chris Coleman has shown you that allowed him to get some early wins on the first Well, Coleman is very athletic, and he's benefited from having a spring football under his belt. Uh, but again, the overall consistency, uh, the strength levels that's needed to play in the offensive line, he's really worked on that. But uh, he's very, very athletic, and uh, he has good toughness. Well, I think individuals have their good days and in, in, in days that they need to improve upon. But Dylan Bates is another individual uh, who's playing very, very well. Uh, Emmanuel Mosley, uh, as we know, the freshman, 33. And, uh, you know, he's benefited from being here for spring football. So those individuals, Ethan Wolf on offense, uh, continues to impress both in, in the run blocking game but also in the pass catching game as well. Coach, in kickoff <clears> returns, <throat> what kind of guys would you best case scenario like that back there? Some like as big as small as you can best returner that's responsible? Well, being a great returner, you have to have a knack for it. And Devon Young has a knack for it. And so he brings another element. And everything about special teams is – field position, controlling the field position game and what we call hidden yardage. So I, I'm really excited because I think we've added to the returner list. Last year, all we had was Devon Young. And you want to put a person back there who's a threat to go the distance every time they touch the football. And Devon Young is one of those individuals. But Cam Sutton has been gaining some valuable repetitions back there. Uh, Evan Berry as well. Uh, so we've put a lot of people back there to see what they can do in the return game. And as camp continues to progress, we'll scrimmage live special teams as well. Right. 
I'm not going to talk injuries. That's the media policy, and I think I've been pretty lenient in allowing our media to be at practice, but there's some things uh, with the rules nowadays and what we have, that's between our football team. All right, thank you. All right, thank you.